Travis Walton Abduction, 1975 Travis Walton, born February 10, 1953, is an American logger who was supposedly abducted by a UFO on November 5, 1975, while working with a logging crew in the Apache Sitgreaves National Forest in Arizona. Walton could not be found, but reappeared after a five-day search. The Walton case received mainstream publicity and remains one of the best-known instances of alleged alien abduction. UFO historian Jerome Clark writes that few abduction reports have generated as much controversy as the Walton case. It is furthermore one of the very few alien abduction cases with corroborative eyewitnesses. And one of few abduction cases where the time allegedly spent in the custody of aliens plays a rather minor role in the overall account. UFO researchers Jenny Randalls and Peter Hoff write that neither before or since has an abduction story begun in the manner related by Walton and his co-workers. Furthermore, the Walton case is singular in that the victim vanished for days on end with police squads out searching it is an atypical close encounter, fourth kind CE4 which bucks the trend so much that it worried some investigators. Iranian Air Force UFO Intercept, 1946 The 1976 Tehran UFO incident was a radar and visual sighting of an unidentified flying object, UFO, over Tehran, the capital of Iran, during the early morning hours of September 19, 1976. During the incident, two F-4 Phantom II jet interceptors supposedly lost instrumentation and communications as they approached only to have them restored upon withdrawal. One of the aircraft also supposedly suffered temporary weapons systems failure, while preparing to open fire. The incident, recorded in a four-page U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency DIA, report distributed to at least the White House, Secretary of State, Joint Chiefs of Staff, National Security Agency NSA, and Central Intelligence Agency CIA, remains one of the most well-documented military encounters with anomalous phenomena in history. And various senior Iranian military officers directly involved with the events have gone on public record stating their belief that the object was not of terrestrial origin. Valentish Disappearance, 1978 The Valentish Disappearance refers to the unexplained disappearance at around 7.12 p.m. on October 21, 1978 of 20-year-old Frederick Valentish while piloting a Cessna 182 light aircraft over Base Strait in Australia. He intended to land at King Island and return to Moorabbin Airport. During the 127-mile, 235 kilometers, flight, Valendish advised Melbourne Air Traffic Control that he was being accompanied by an aircraft about 1,000 feet, 300 meters, above him. He described some unusual actions and features of the aircraft, saying that his engine had begun running roughly, and finally reported that the strange aircraft is hovering on top of me again. It is hovering and it's not an aircraft. Valentish and his aircraft were never recovered, and an Australian Department of Transport investigation concluded that the reason for the disappearance could not be determined. Belated reports of a UFO sighting in Australia, on the night of the disappearance led Ken Williams, a spokesman for the Department of Transport, to tell Associated Press that it's funny all these people ringing up with UFO reports well after Valentish's disappearance. Rendlesham Forest Incident, 1980 The Ministry of Defense denied the event posed any threat to national security, and stated that it was therefore never investigated as a security matter. Later evidence indicated that there was a substantial mod file on the subject, 
which led to claims of a cover-up. Some interpreted this as part of a larger pattern of information suppression concerning the true nature of unidentified flying objects by both the United States and British governments. One person to take this view was eyewitness and deputy base commander Colonel Charles Halt. Another was former NATO head and UK Chief of the Defence Staff Lord Peter Hill Norton, who stated whatever happened at this USAF base was necessarily of national security interest. However, when the file was released in 2001 it turned out to consist mostly of internal correspondence and responses to inquiries from the public. Skeptics note that the lack of any in-depth investigation in the publicly released documents is consistent with the mod's earlier statement that they never took the case seriously. Included in the released files is an explanation given by Defense Minister Lord Drefgarn as to why the mod did not investigate further. The sightings have been explained as misinterpretation of a series of nocturnal lights of Fireball, the Orford Ness Lighthouse and Bright Stars. Phoenix Lights, 1997 The Phoenix Lights were a series of widely sighted unidentified flying objects observed in the skies over Arizona, Nevada in the United States, and Sonora, Mexico on Thursday, March 13, 1997. Lights of varying descriptions were seen by thousands of people between 1930 and 2230 MST, in a space of about 300 miles, 480 kilometers from the Nevada line, through Phoenix, to the edge of Tucson. There were allegedly two distinct events involved in the incident, a triangular formation of lights seen to pass over the state, and a series of stationary lights seen in the Phoenix area. The United States Air Force identified the second group of lights as flares dropped by A-10 Warthog aircraft that were on training exercises at the Barry Goldwater Range in southwest Arizona. Witnesses claim to have observed a huge carpenter's square-shaped UFO, containing five spherical lights or possibly light-emitting engines. Five Symington, the governor at the time, was one witness to this incident. He later called the object otherworldly. The lights were reported to have reappeared in 2007 and 2008, but these events were quickly attributed to military flares dropped by fighter aircraft at Luke Air Force Base and flares attached to helium balloons released by a civilian, 